Hi, thank you for joining me in this webinar on CCI during cryogenic storage. I am John Sebastian Paris, Commercial Director at Aseptic Technologies, and together with my colleagues, we prepare this presentation that I'm very happy to share with you. We are dedicated to helping pharma companies to deliver breakthrough therapies to their patients by bringing innovation to the aseptic feeding operations. The company was created in 2002 and is a member of SCAN Group. Just a few words about us. Our expertise relies on three pillars. First, the AT closed vial technology, and then the manufacturing of feeding kits and devices used on our equipment. Third, is our system for aseptic liquid transfer, known as the AT port. In the beginning, this technology was developed from scratch. So it's therefore only in 2008 that the commercial promotion of the AT closed vial could start. And our first customer, Lonza Walkersville, in the US, is actually the one that opened our eyes on the resistance of the AT closed vial to cryogenic storage. It was indeed not developed as a cryo vial. Since then, we gained a lot of experience with that application, with now more than 300 companies using it for that application. So what is the HCT closed vial technology? It consists in a vial which is supplied to the biopharmaceutical company, closed and ready to fill. The filling is performed by a needle which pierces the stopper to inject the product into the vial. Right after, the stopper is resealed with a laser which remelts the upper surface of the stopper. Finally, we snap fit a cap on it and then the product is safely filled in an anti-closed vial ready for next process steps. On a big picture, different sites are involved. One site for the manufacturing of the vial, which is very unique as mulligan closing is directly done in an ISO 5 environment. Once the vial are manufactured, they can be sent for sterilization. After gamma radiation, the vial comes back to us and can pass different QC tests. Once these are released, they can be finally shipped to you for the fill and finish operations, which are always filling through the stopper laser resealing and capping. Here you see the range of vial available from one to 50 ml and other different equipment to process these vials from manual to high speed fully automated. All the equipments have equivalent processes and use single use product path. They can be installed in BSCs, wraps, or isolators. We have also worked with different companies <clears throat> for ancillary solutions, for control rate freezers, cryo boxes, thawing devices, collection devices, and others. So what are the challenges for cell engine manufacturers? Well, in terms of fill and finish, the first one is the stability of the product once formulated and the short time window allowed for this fill and finish. The contamination management is also important, especially during manual operation. And scalability, either scale up or scale out, has also to be taught since the beginning. During the development phases, the dose might change. So the container shall also be capable of adapting to different doses. Of course, for each of you, the control of cost of goods is of importance. And the safe cryopreservation and product delivery to the patient, known as the CCI, is the number one preoccupation. For cell and gene therapies, typical storage conditions are around minus 80, or in VOP phase of liquid nitrogen, and most of the time shipping on dry ice, which brings some new challenges to the field. 
So what does mean CCI? It is the ability of the closure system to provide a safe, sterile barrier and maintain the product quality throughout the shelf life of the product. A recent survey from the PDA shows that the most common storage temperature being at vapor phase of liquid nitrogen. What is the regulatory perspective on it? Well, the container system should be qualified and demonstrate how the different components react and interact during the complete life cycle of the product. And the CCI is shown as a critical quality parameter. On top of that, PAD, QBD, and QRM are also shown extremely important. And the monitoring and verification of pre-established material attributes provide greater assurance to the product. How do we achieve uncompromised CCI with the AT closed vial? Well, as we have seen, these vials are produced, molded, and assembled by robots in clean rooms. So we can achieve extremely tight tolerances of the different parts. Then, thanks to the fact of using polymers only and having a compression between the stopper and the body, plus a gamma radiation, we can see bonding between those two pieces, which plays a very important role in the CCI of those containers. Finally, the ability to do quality control tests on the assembled container is also extremely important for you in the assurance of a safe fill and finish operations. This was demonstrated by different means, and I want to show you three of them. First one is the laser headspace analysis we perform with the company Lighthouse Instruments. When you do store a vial in vapor phase of liquid nitrogen, if you would have a leak, the oxygen of the headspace <clears throat> would be replaced by nitrogen. Therefore, if you do a laser headspace analysis after storage in these conditions, if you have a drop, you would see, a, um, if you have a leak, sorry, you would see a drop of the oxygen content in the headspace. Also, after thawing, because of the nitrogen expansion, you would also be able to detect an increase of pressure. The test, of course, shown that none of the vials did show either a drop of oxygen or an increase of pressure. A second test that I'd like to share with you is the computed tomography scan we performed recently, which shows at different temperatures, minus 80 and in vapor phase of liquid nitrogen, how the different parts of the vial react. And we have seen that we do not lose contact between the stopper and the body, and therefore maintain CCI at these different temperatures. I spoke about bonding. This was recently analyzed also, and observed between the body and the stopper on the complete circumference of the vial. This plays an, an extremely important role in keeping CCI at extreme temperatures. For our customers, we use this information plus many other tests we performed in the past. In a, um, a risk analysis on all the potential factors that could affect a container closure integrity. This was then arranged in a mind map and the output of this mind map was feeding in, in an FMEA analysis <clears throat> in which each and every factor has been analyzed and the mitigation in place was described. And for each and every mitigation in place, this document points to the validation report available for it. These reports 
are provided to our customers in a validation master plan we provide together with our equipment. Speaking of customers, here you can see some of them and some selected ones in the different field of cell and gene therapies. So what can be the conclusion of this webinar? CCI is very important for all drug products, but critical for cell and gene because of their storage condition. The selected container system shall resist to these extremely low temperatures and pre-assembled polymer can re containers can resist to these temperatures. But the method used to assemble and close them shall be reliable and verifiable. You, the sponsor, shall smoothly advance in the different development phases of it with it by having the ability either to change the size of the container, but also, of course, most importantly, to scale up or scale out your process. Therefore, the holistic approach with the AT Close by technology offers it all. And this is why it is selected and preferred by over 300 users worldwide for over 10 years now. So if this subject is of interest for you, I encourage you to go on our website and download a white paper we recently published on the subject. Otherwise, I'd like to end this presentation by inviting you to follow us either on LinkedIn or on Twitter for the latest information about aseptic technologies. Otherwise, I will be very happy to connect directly with you via email. Again, thank you very much for assisting to this webinar, and I will be pleased to be in connection with you.